Greetings and salutations, everyone. Good to have you for another tutorial in the wonderful Don't Starve Together. Today, we will look to set up our very own pig farm, turning it into one of the very best farms around. Let's get to it, and let's go find some pigs. Stumbling upon the fat man himself, the pig king, is a good starting point. It is very likely you'll find a decent amount of pigs around. Get yourself a hammer and start destroying their lovely homes like the monster you are. After rooting these pigs from their homes, it is time for us to wander the world and go find some more. Now it is smart to take a look in and around the king as the birch biome should hold several more pigs for you. Deciduous biomes are one of the more likely places you'll find more homes to destroy, but wherever you find them, just always keep smashing to your heart's content. I'm doubtful that it's going to really occur that often, but you could stumble upon a piggy out in the middle of nowhere. As always, just take his house for your own. In your travels, I'm sure you've seen that certain DST mobs don't really like one another. In this case, a pig and a spider fight can potentially provide some more loot needed to construct the farm. Plus, might as well take advantage of the distracted spiders and get more huts if they're near the nests. And if you're feeling murdery, there's nothing like killing some of our pig friends right after destroying their lives and homes. With all that done, head to a crafting machine and start making your very own huts using all the loot from your journey thus far. Note that every two huts hammered equals one hut for your crafting pleasure. Find a nice area for yourself either in base or out and begin to place the huts in close proximity to one another. With the huts placed, there are a couple more things to do until completion. Head back to your science machine or alchemy machine and either using leftover cut stone or making your own, head to the structures tab once more and make yourself some walls. With the walls made, head on over back to your huts and begin placing them in a formation similar to what you see here. Of course, make yourself a door for your own pen, and, as a final piece of the puzzle, leave a leftover pig butt within the pen for later. Once the morning hits, the pig will be looking to eat, and they have a butt on the mind. You will certainly have to corral some wanderers back to the pen, but once close enough, they will join their mindless brethren. Now, you might be thinking that the farm is ready to go, but I have some bad news. It's not. Hitting the pigs in this state will only aggro them all and cause some issues for you. No. We must wait to begin the farm. Note, however, that we are currently in dusk and the pigs remain outside instead of heading to sleep. And, what do you know, the piggies even stay out in the dark of night. These facts lend to the farm as a whole. Seeing as we have some time to kill, it wouldn't hurt to add some additional huts from our new or leftover loot. It is not entirely necessary, but I do recommend walling off the entire farm as well. Just in case a certain character is present in-game for you. 
As always, make sure that you will be able to get your butt inside the farm by using some more wood gates. As far as some different configurations for the farm, you can go big or you can go a bit more enclosed and get fancy with the placing. However you set it up, chances are you won't have one of these set up in time for an early game farm. So, I'll see you in a few days. Welcome to the first night of the new farm. Make note that we are doing this on a full moon. That is what we were waiting for. Why? Because pigs turn into were-pigs during a full moon. And that is when we want them dead. Were-pigs, unlike normal pigs, drop a guaranteed pig butt and two meat. The farm begins. You may notice how quickly my sanity is draining, so make sure you can manage that. But also make note that the were-pigs are still too occupied to care about me killing the others. So there's no worrying about fighting multiple at once. Of course, once they're all dead, reap the spoils, and you're good. Before you leave, make sure to leave the bait, in this case a pig butt, within the pen to make sure to repeat the process of attracting the pigs for the next time. And, for whichever type of farm you can think of, only one thing is certain. Only kill the pigs during a full moon when they are were-pigs. But, Beard, can't we just start a pig war and do this farm this way? Well, sure, if you want hardly any loot and you want to waste time. Even with a significant number dead, there was only a couple pieces of meat on the ground and not a single butt to plunder. This, this is why you wait for werepigs. If you wait for full moons, and you'll be rejoicing each morning as you'll be showered with butts and meat. Like the Tallbird Farm, the pig farm can be done all cycle long, but you need to do some work. Beard hopped into creative mode to show you what is needed. Obviously, to protect against the lightning strikes, you'll need a lightning rod, but to prevent against fire, you need an ice flingo. So let's start by placing the flingo. With the ice flingo matic placed, just wall it in. Get some doors, place some more bait, and get the building some more huts. Once again, the choice in placement is yours, but keep the huts in range of the flingo or you're going to have some problems. Of course, get that lightning rod up. You're gonna need it. With the huts placed, to get the place in some more walls around the farm once again. You might wonder what this middle path is for. Well, it's to allow easy access to pigs without fuss and them getting in the way, and to the flingo to fuel it if need be. And at the very next full moon, the farming begins once more. Hopefully, you don't have the problem of frog rain as well. There you have it folks, a little tutorial on setting up your very own pig farm. I'll be seeing you in the next one.